Okay, also my name is Faith. I'm so happy to have that done. Awesome. Well, welcome to our church service today here. Um, I've been loving this series where we're walking through all these different topics. Um, I think it's been really special to see just what the Lord is speaking to you guys about and just to see like how he's orchestrating all the different things that we've walked through. Um, I think it's special that we get to choose what we're talking about because it kind of shows a little bit about your heart and what you care about, and that has been really neat. Um, but if this is your first week here, you haven't been here before, and maybe you don't know Jesus, uh, your friend, you had a sleepover, and his mom, they, he said, you can sleep over, but you have to come to church, and so you're here, and you're not loving it, and you don't know what talking about. That's okay, because I think that this message is applicable to you, um, and I would just encourage you to, to tune in. Um, today, we're going to get to talk about leadership, which, what even is leadership? It's a hot topic, it's a... It's a topic that people desire, a position that people want, um, but what is it? Um, so the definition, we're, that's where we'll start off because we're all going to be on the same page here, okay? Leadership is the action of leading a group of people or an organization to a common place. I'm excited about this sermon because I feel like what I'm saying to you is not coming from me because I just really don't have anything to say, but truly from the Lord. Um, so I'm just excited to be able to deliver it to you. But it feels special because I feel like this is a sermon that I received at a point in my life. Um, I, was at, I was at camp uh, in high school, sophomore year, and was with my youth group. Um, kind of a special year because it was just right before a time of transition where my, our youth pastor stepped away and some people, we, there's just a lot of transition in the church. So it's just like a special year that we got to be together. Um, and at this service, it was kind of like a commissioning type deal. Um, the pastor had he said, like, if you feel called to be a missionary, like, we're gonna we're gonna pray for you. We're gonna like confirm that calling. We're gonna like commission you out. Um, if you feel, feel called to be a pastor, we're gonna pray for you. We're gonna commission you. We're gonna call you. Um, if you feel called to be a teacher, just like different different um, things that you can be appointed to in the church. And so then the service kind of ended, and he circled back, and he's like, I don't know, like I just feel like maybe there's some people in the room who are called to like a life of like, you just feel called to like a different kind of lifestyle, like a, a life of leadership. You don't really know what that looks like, but you just like, people are following you and you know that like the Lord has like appointed you to a, just a different standard. Um, like I just wanna pray for you. So like if you feel called to this life of leadership, um, just go ahead and he, he said, bow, bow your heads, close your eyes and we'll all be praying for you. And I just kind of felt in that moment like, oh, like, I, and that sounds prideful. Like I'm, I'm not trying to say like, oh, I feel called to a higher life. Like I just really, that felt like personal to me. Like, man, like, I truly, like, I've seen in my life how the Lord has allowed me to, like, lead other people, and it just felt, um, that just felt like something that was special to me. So I really feel like that kind of message is what the Lord put on my heart to deliver to you guys today. So with that being said, I've turned to Twitter for my research, as any good researcher would, and I have some tweets to share with you about what the world says when it comes to leadership. Now my first tweet comes from at Leaders Biz, and he says, leadership is not a rank or a position to be attained, but leadership is a service to be given. Okay, I can get behind that. Leadership is natural, typically kind of just happens. Um, it's not really something you like learn to do. I agree, I, I agree that leadership is not a rank or a position to be attained. Leadership is a service to be given. Simon Sinek says, weak leaders have the luxury of looking after themselves. Great leaders have the honor of looking after others. Again, I, I totally agree. Leadership is selfless. That's essentially what he's saying there, and I can affirm it. Now, I have another tweet from the one and only Ken Engel, and he says, leadership can be summed up into one simple statement. The goal is to keep the main thing the main thing. Your thinking is driven by your why, your level of discipline is driven by your what, and your level of productivity is driven by your how. Say it with me, leadership may be your Divine design. Okay, here's a little about leadership. It's such a hot topic in the world. And what the world is saying is true. Those are all true things. Leadership is natural, it's selfless, it potentially is what you're called to do. But what I love is that leadership is enriched when you invite Jesus in. That's right. Um, we've heard people have said good things about leadership, but let's turn to what Jesus is saying about leadership. Uh, Darian, if you have Mark 10, 40, 3 through 45, you can read it. But it, not, but it shall not be about me with me. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> but it shall not be so among you. But whoever will be great among you must be your servant. Whoever will be first among you must be the slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, to give his life as an answer for me. Right, so even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. Leadership good leadership is about service. 
leadership is tied to servanthood. What's going on in Mark 10 here? The like the couple verses above it, if you have like the bold titles in your Bible, it's talking about the request of James and John. So James and John are talking to Jesus and they're they're kind of saying, like, we kind of want like a position of power, like we we've been kind of good to you, like we would just love for you to like entrust us with something good. We want to be your right hand. And Jesus just kind of like flips it upside down and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like leadership is not about having the position or the stage or the lights or the microphone. Like leadership is about you being selfless and about you serving, like you are focused on serving others. Um, we're going to look at the next quality of good leadership, which comes from Psalm 37. So, Kim, if you want to read that one? Verse 7. You can start with. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways when they carry out their wicked schemes. Right. And then, can you read 16 and 17? Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. It's good. So wait for the Lord and do not fret when other people succeed in their ways. What's happening here in Psalm 37 is essentially he's talking about, like, I guess the general question that he would be answering is, like, why do bad things happen to good people? Or, like, why do other people succeed when I, like, it's just kind of a comparison game. So you, you really can look at that and think leadership remains consistent. Good leadership remains consistent. You're not comparing yourself to what other people are, are hearing from the Lord. You're not comparing yourself to what other people are, are being successful in or succeeding in. Um, you have to rely faithful in what the Lord has said, and you have to trust that effective leadership flows from lifestyle. So you can't, like, if you lead well without the Lord, like, people can lead without the Lord, but they can't successfully do that because the Lord sustains you, and you have to flow from this place of fullness with the Lord. Um, my last point about good leadership is that good leadership is aware. We're going to read from Acts 20, 28. One, you have that. You have that. 20, 28. 20, 28. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, be shepherds of the church of God, which he thought was so I think that this is so important. Um, you can't be a leader and not know about the people you're leading. Um, I've had a couple classes with Dr. Hackett, and something he says common, like often, is you can't be a shepherd and not smell like the sheep. Yeah. Um, so I think like that kind of ties into service as well. Like you have to you have to serve your people and you have to know them. You, but you really should pray to the Lord for discernment to know your people mm -hmm. um, because you have to have a relationship with the Lord in order to know your people. Um, I'm just going to be honest. Okay. Okay, good thing. Okay, we're going to look at Luke chapter 15. <laughs> okay, let me get it together. Okay, we're going to go to Luke chapter 15. We're going to talk about the prodigal son. Um, I think that the prodigal son is a good story of an example of a good leader. Um, I'm going to read it to you. Luke 15, chapter 11. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the, the estate. So he divided his property between them. And not long after that, the son got together all he had and set off for a distant country where he squandered his wealth in wild living. Okay, so essentially the story, to sum it up, there is a man with two sons, and one son requests to the dad, he's like, I want to go off on my own, like, I don't want to stay in the family, I want to live my own life, I want to do what I want to do, and he asks his dad for his money, and he essentially just tells him that, and his dad gives it to him. And I think this is a great example of a good leader, because he knew, he let his son fail. Like, he knew that this wasn't going to be good, but he still let him go so that he could learn. So he could learn. Um, and then I think a really good point in the story is he's aware when he comes back. So the son goes on to live his own life, he squanders his money, um, there's a family, there's any food, and he's just living just like this empty lifestyle. Um, and he gets to this point where he's like, I just need to go home. Like, I've hit the bottom. Like, nothing, there's nothing good to come. I know that I can't do anything. So let me go home and see if my dad will let me just, like, live, out, like, live outside. Like, it's just, whatever happens, I just need to go home. So he goes home, and as he's walking home, his father is watching for him. I think this is a great example of how a, a leader can be aware. His dad was was aware of his son's whereabouts and was watching for him. He was attentive to his sheep 
and he waited for him to come home, and he greets him with love and kindness. Um, he was patient with him, and he, was, he served him, he was consistent with him. It's just a good example of what a leader should be all the way around. Um, so I want to pose to you a challenge today. Uh, to be a good leader, it's important to open your mind to be a servant. Maybe you could pick up trash on the floor or ask a friend what they need. Potentially it could just be quality time. Not everyone needs a service, but maybe just your time. I want you to self-reflect and see where you're least consistent. What habits can you build to be healthy? And take inventory of your life and those who you feel like you're leading. Ask the Lord for an attentive mind to those who he's entrusted you with and ask for discernment over the people that you have in your space. See what, doors the op see what doors the Lord will open for you when you're faithful to him in these three things. Simon Sinek said it well when he said, weak leaders have the luxury of looking after themselves. Great leaders have the honor of looking after others. I think Jesus captures what I'm trying to say best in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. This is what I think he would tweet. Be imitators of me as I am in Christ. Imitate Jesus, lead well. If you take nothing from me, take that. Imitate Jesus, lead well. In the beginning, I said that this message was directed towards a special group of people, and I want to circle back to that. Um, maybe in the prodigal son story, you're hearing about the father and how he's a good leader and how he's demonstrating these great qualities of being a servant and consistent and being aware of his sheep. But maybe you find yourself in the position of the son. Maybe you find yourself in the position of wanting to live a different life or just have fun or just take off your, your requirements, your restraints or what's holding you, holding you back and you just want to live this free life. Um, but you know in your heart that you're called to a higher life. You're called to this life of the Father, to be attentive to a sheep and to be consistent in character and to be servants, um, to be aware. You know that you're called to this life of leadership, but you're living in the life of the Son. Um, I just want you to know that the Lord is the only thing that will develop you to that stage. I want to know that the Lord is here reaching out to you, and he's not, in a, he's not reaching out in a sense of condemnation. He's not mad at you, but he loves you, and he wants to meet with you, and he wants to develop you. Um, so I just want to pray for you today. For If you find yourself in that group um, and feel comfortable after the service, we'll have our prayer team in the front. You can meet with one of them in order to fulfill the next steps. But let's pray. Jesus, thank you for reaching out to me today. Thank you for seeking me out, and thank you for meeting me here. I know that I need a relationship with you in order to be the best version of me, and I thank you for wanting that. Uh, I believe in you, and I know, I know, God, that you died for me, and I know that you're here with me today, God. And I just want to start this relationship with you, and I want to just be with you every day, God. So thank you for meeting me here. God, thank you for never letting me go. Uh, just be with us as we carry on. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.